All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, we are back again, ladies and gentlemen, with another one. Uh, hopefully, we have a very, very good show. We are living in exciting times, ladies and gentlemen, in exciting times. We should be excited. Do you know what I mean? New owner, new era, new beginnings, maybe a new way of running Chelsea Football Club. We'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, the shortlist pretty much confirmed. Well, we're still awaiting Final news, I believe, on Candy. Mr. Candy Man. Candy. This Candy just doesn't seem to run away. Doesn't seem to get away anywhere. Uh, and even if he does lose, apparently Candy will look to venture or partner with someone else. So we'll see what happens there. We're still waiting on Candy and uh, Nick Candy. And we are waiting on the Ricketts. How are they still in the hunt, ladies and gentlemen. How are Ricketts still in this chasing pack? Although apparently it's been well known and well documented, ladies and gentlemen, that it is a two-horse race between Todd Bowley and Sir Martin Broughton, um, who is uh, in combination with Seth Coe and Josh Harris, and I think they've got this other particular group, which we'll get into, who uh, who, who is basically their, their backing. Um, let me see if I can uh, get this for you guys. Just bear with me one second. Yeah, so the other group is... Uh, so Martin brought in Josh Harris. Um, part... Crystal Palace owner Josh Harris reportedly worth around 4.5 billion. Crystal Palace shareholder Harris is th thought to be the main financial driver behind the bid. David Blitzer, there you go, another Palace shareholder. Palace, ladies and gentlemen, taking over Chelsea Football Club. <laughs> Crystal Palace, we've already got their jersey, I suppose. Um, I've I've got that that Crystal Palace jersey, so we're we're already there. And now we're just waiting on the official logo change, I suppose. Maybe even add some Crystal Palace logo around the Chelsea one. But yeah, Josh Harris, David Blitzer, both are actually shareholders of, of Crystal Palace. And obviously they own uh, 76ers and so on and so forth. Apparently a lot of people are not happy with Josh Harris and David, Bl uh, David Blitzer. Um, apparently they don't really run the 76ers as well as they really should be. Um, look, I think the strong word, ladies and gentlemen, is that Todd Bowley, Todd Bowley is most likely going to be the eventual winner, is most likely going to be the eventual winner. But before we get into all of that, ladies and gentlemen, three minutes into it, and we've got nearly 70 people live right now. First of all, I need 70 likes. Immediately, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have a really good one-on-one, -on -one, well, one-on-many um, interaction today. I will bring out a lot of your comments. Um, it's been a while since we did a live, so I want to enjoy this with each and every one of you guys. But first of all, need the likes to absolutely shoot up to close to 60. Shoot those likes up. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. We're very, very close to 11,000 subscribers, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get there. And uh, let's do some let's do some shout out Before we get into the whole news si uh, situation of things, um, I would love to give you guys a shout out because you guys have been amazing, amazing in recent times. The views on videos in recent days has been immense. The comments have been flying in. So I want to take this opportunity to quickly shout you guys out before we get into the news and get into your comments and your thoughts. First of all, my man, Marva, big up, Ms. Marva, appreciate all the conversations we have. I uh, love the way you always send through all this new stuff to me. So much appreciated, Marva. Good to see you. My boy, Shubra. Shubra, good to see you, my man. Uh, no to Ricketts. 100% no to Ricketts. And we're going to talk about this particular situation. How has Ricketts' family 
still managed to be in the conversation. It is mad. The, the evidence against them, I, I mean, this isn't even some sort of, you know, assumptions or a well-educated guess that, oh, you know what, Roman could be connected with Putin. There is no proof that's been given out, but we just assume the fact that, yeah, most likely he's doing something there. Whereas Ricketts, they've categorically come out. Their father has actually said, Muslims are my enemy. And even his son, there's been some derogatory stuff in regards to Asians. So how are they still in the race? It still baffles me. It makes me think, how legitimate is this process of the shortlist? Because the Rain Group apparently are very close to the Ricketts. They've actually got a partnership together in one of the ventures that they have. So uh, it, it's, it's quite mad. Max Football, good to see you. Hate said season, Habibi Miz, good to see you. Julian D, uh, VD Berg, what up, Miz? And chat, hope all is well. Hopefully, this gets sorted out best way possible ASAP. I've been exhausted by the constant reports lately. I think we all have been exhausted. As interesting as it has been, but it's been very, very exhaustive. Um, I would like this to be well and truly over. Well, at least know who the who the eventual winner is or who the owner is before the Brentford game that comes around in the Premier League. Before Real Madrid, I think that would be absolutely brilliant. Hopefully all these sanctions and everything can go away. But I get the feeling that since Roman has been given the opportunity to inject further 30 million, which will probably see us out for another month, we may be lingering this around for the takeover for one more month, I'd say. We probably may know the winner within the next week, but then the takeover to completely finalize further three more weeks, I'd say, on top of that. Abu Bakr Karbo, good to see you. I have not seen Rainbank publish the shortlisted candidate. Yeah, look, I've no one's seen that. But there's internal words now, top journalists like your Matt Laws, Nizar Kinsella, and many other journalists across Financial Times and so on and so forth, they've apparently heard that Rain Group has called up Todd Bowley and Sir Martin Broughton and their group, the consortium, and let them know that they've been successful. So, yeah, there hasn't been anything officially stated by the Rain Group, but the word is out there. The word is out there. And Apparently, Candyman and um, and Ricketts are looking to see whether they've made it. We already know the Saudi group is out, ladies and gentlemen. The Saudis are gone, and um, Woody's Woody Johnson's gone, and a few of the other names. I think I think they're gone as well. Um, <laughs> Turkish brother didn't even make it. He apparently had the wrong email, which is quite mad. So, Krishna Miz is back live. Good to have you back, Miz. Some mad times we are going through at Football Terrace, linking us to Pogba. Unbelievable times. Linking us to Pogba. Wow. I don't think so. Um, even though it's a very, very good prospect, I suppose, as a free, but yeah, I can't see this happening. I really cannot see this happening. I mean, we can talk about it in details down the track, but I really can't see this happening. Um, Waylon, good to see you. So, Ms. the Ricketts are out. Look, uh, the word in the street is they're going to make the shortlist, but they're not in the horse race. Apparently, it's down to two bidders, which is Top Bowley and Sir Martin Broughton. But really, the out-and-out -out contender is Todd Bowley. But yeah, the Ricketts, it's not official that they're out of the shortlist. They apparently still could be there. Um, Jack Haywood, good to see you. Uh, Sayazani, good to see you. Uh, Jack, thank you so much for all you've been doing recently. Means your content has definitely kept me sane in the midst of all the chaos with Chelsea. My man, thank you so much. Appreciate the kind words. Um, look, I love bringing the content to you guys. Honestly, it's 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 a pleasure to do that. Advey, big up, bro. Good to see you. Uh, Let's see. Note, good to see you. At this stage, I see Todd Bowley winning. I, I think he is the clear cup favorite. He'd be the overwhelming favorite at the moment. Tumo CL, good to see you. Uh, good to see you, everyone. Good stuff. Deals is he. Big up, Miz. The Rain Group, a racist Roman Abramovich needs to sack them. Look, I, I don't know. 
I don't know how they got like. See, that's the thing. I'm not really sure how the Rain Group was assigned to do this transaction. The US-based merchant bank. I mean, did Roman actually select them? Or was this pre-selected? I don't know. I'm not really sure whether this has been sort of publicized as to who selected the Rain Group. Because the Rain Group is close to the Ricketts family. Like... Conflict of interest surely comes into this situation. Aka Aka, good to see you. First live I've managed to watch for a while. Big up, Miss. Big up to you, Aka Aka. Hassan Ali, good to see you. MAFS41, good to see you, my man. CFC Fahim, big up, Miss. Good to see you, man. Matt Chels, love you, brother. Good to see you in the live chat, man. Really appreciate all the comments you give me. Bolly has a uh, has had a plan uh, for. So, look, we're going to talk about all of this stuff very, very soon. I think Top Bowley, by far, uh, the one that looks like has a solid plan, has the capacity for a quick takeover. That's what we want. We want a quick takeover. We don't want to prolong four, five, six weeks takeover. We just want something in and out quick. Um, and Todd Bowley seems to have a very good plan in order to make Chelsea sustainable. Um, even though Sir Martin Broughton and Josh Harris, they're now into the mix, the two two horse race. I think the thing that Rain Group probably hasn't seen from Sir Martin Broughton is they now want to see a proper plan. What is your plan? Where is your money? How are you going to finance the whole thing? This is what we're going to get to see from Sir Martin Broughton very, very soon. Um we know Todd Bowley, he's ready. His plan is ready. His plan is ready to go. Naz, good to see you. Yeah, this is what I read not that long ago, Naz. Apparently, Lord Co, uh, Sebastian Co, Lord Sebastian Co, partner of Martin Broughton, is linked to a Russian oligarch. Scenes if the club gets frozen again. That, that would be mad. That would be mad. But yeah, apparently he's linked as well. How this is even a option, I have no idea. Nesbitt, good to see you. Steven, good to see you. Nariga, good to see you. Um, so many people, man. Love it. Steven, good to see you. Chelsea, the Kingslayer, good to see you. Himanshu, thank you so much for the super chat, my man. Hey, Miz, not to be negative, but I think it's all down for after this. I don't trust the bowl, this Bowley guy. Looks like a fugazi to me. Nah, you know what, Himanshu? I, I think check out some of his interviews way back in 2019. I'm not even talking about recent ones. I'm talking about when he first wanted to take over Chelsea. He's very well spoken, and you know he's not he's not kidding about. Like you can tell the the genuine sort of vibe that you get. So do check him out. And I think if you look at the history, his his CV, what he's been doing with LA Dodgers has been very very good. Um, th there's a lot of praise uh, from the LA Dodgers fan base um, about how. Top Bowley, even though he's not the majority holdover, there, but 20% or so, but still he's doing a really good job there. They're, they've got a good plan. Um, they haven't sold anything outrageous to Chelsea that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. They've actually said, look, winning is still the biggest thing. Winning is still their prerogative, but not in the sense where we're just going to throw money for the sake of money. They want to be smart. They want to be data-driven and much like the Liverpool model, that's what they were saying. So I've got no issues with that. As long as you make sound investments, I don't necessarily need 100 million pound investments every window. I don't need that. Look at what happened with Lukaku. We'll be lucky to sell Lukaku for, for 40 million now. So... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, like, if we get the proper scouts, I'm happy for us to um, manage in a far more sustainable manner. So, Krishna, this seems good, but not fairly sure what will happen. What is this? Let me have a look at that. Bloomberg. Why LA Dodgers owners, Todd Bolly, wants to buy the Premier League? Okay, it must be a video. All right, yeah, check that out, guys. Check that out. So I just um, 
shared a particular link. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get straight into this. Boom. Matthew Law, Matt Law, bad boy Matt Law, who has, who has stopped replies on his tweet. You can only reply if he follows you, I suppose. Oh, no, he's actually stopped. People at Matt does uh, follow, mention, can reply. Yeah, yeah, so if he follows you or if he mentions you, then he can. Yeah, he's, um, he's worried. He's worried, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. As reported last night, the race for Chelsea shaping up to be a head-to-head -head between Bowley and Broughton Harris. Here is a detailed profile of what we know about each bid for Chelsea fans to decide who they would prefer. Let me just read through to you what the article said, and then we'll capture some of your comments. Zvo Genius, good to see you, my man. Big up, Miz. Uh, Got to have a chat soon, 100%. Plubban, good to see you as well. Nash, good to see you. Ridwan, good to see you. MG, good to see you. Ben, good to see you. Um, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Over 120. Guys, make sure we get to 100 likes immediately. Let's get those likes up. Okay, let me read this article to you guys before we get to some of your comments. Meet the Chelsea bidders, Top Bowley and Josh Harris, Sir Martin Broughton group in the race to take over as the Chelsea sale process heads for the final phase. Telegraph Sports takes a closer look at two outright favourites. Todd Bowley and Josh Harris group, fronted by Sir Martin Broughton, became the first bidders to be shortlisted to buy Chelsea. The race to take control of the European champions is shaping up to be a head-to-head -head contest between two bidders who are now considered the outright favourites. He, Telegraph, Sport, profiles both bids as they now prepare for the final phase of the Chelsea sale process. So th th these guys are quite confirmed that it'll be these two, uh, you know... We're still awaiting on the word for the Ricketts and Candy Bar. I think, I think at the end of the day, it'll be these two and eventually should be Todd Bowley. Okay, Todd Bowley, who's on the bid? Todd Bowley, the American, is part of the LA Dodgers with a net worth almost $5 billion. So he's, he's, he's from the LA Dodgers side of things and it's worth $5 billion. Hans Jörg Wiss, the Swiss brother, if you guys remember, an 86-year-old Swiss philanthropist. His net worth is said to be 3.85 billion. So 5 billion, 3.85 billion. Oh, Miz, that doesn't sound that much. How's Bowley going to do this? Well, hold on. They've got another particular person, Jonathan Goldstein, a British entrepreneur who has extensive knowledge and experience of property acquisition and development. So I think this guy is probably going to be the guy who's going to be driving the stadium redevelopment or the new stadium planning, so on and so forth. The issue is he's apparently a Spurs fan, but minor issue. You're going to be winning some trophies now, so get excited, my man. You've never seen trophies in your life. This is the biggest one. This is where Todd Bowley's money is coming from, ladies and gentlemen. Clear Lake Capital. The California investment firm has over $60 billion of assets under management. So we got, when you've got that much assets under management, you can obviously borrow against that asset. So, And I'm sure they've probably got a lot of cash hanging about as well. When you've got 60 billion of assets, there's probably a lot of cash involvement there. Um, and I, I don't think a bit of 2 billion or 3 billion for Chelsea, let's say 3 billion, um, shouldn't be an issue. So that's Todd Bowley's consortium ladies and gentlemen that's his consortium now in regards to sports experience the dodgers won baseball's world series in 2020 so dodgers actually won the world series in 2020 so these guys they're winners and claimed eight back-to-back -back western division titles since bowley's in uh, involvement eight back-to-back -back western division titles so i think they have the eastern and the western divisions and they've been winning the Western Division titles for eight back-to-back -back times. He also has a stake in the LA, LA Sparks women's basketball team and, the, and bought a stake in the LA Lakers men's team last July. So he also has a stake in LA Lakers, ladies and gentlemen. 
Goldstein is a lifelong football fanatic, albeit a Tottenham Hotspur supporter. Bowley made a 2.2 billion bid for Chelsea in 2019, which was turned down. So that's the other factor, ladies and gentlemen, for Bowley. He's gone for Chelsea back in 2019. He wanted Chelsea back in 2019. So you know his interest isn't new. He's always wanted Chelsea. Stamford Bridge, as revealed by Telegraph Sports with Bowley bid, he was already looked into the feasibility and costing of redeveloping Stamford Bridge on its exciting site. There is not believed to be any appetite to try to move the stadium to another part of London, and Goldstein's experience will be key in this area. So they're not looking to move Stamford Bridge somewhere else. They're looking to maybe increase it. I think currently it's at 40,000. So they're looking to maybe increase it from 40,000 to, even if we can get it to 60,000, ladies and gentlemen, that will be a big, big plus point for us to earn extra revenue. So bear that in mind. What have they said? Bowley is yet to speak publicly about his bid to buy Chelsea, but supporters have been excited by some of his old comments including his reply to a question on what a successful ownership of Dodgers would look like. You're not really asking me that, are you? He asked. The more World Series we win, the more valuable franchise it is, right? There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's his ideology of owning a particular sporting team. Win. The more you win, the more valuable you're going to become. Any weaknesses? Aside from the fact that some Chelsea fans were initially concerned by the fact Goldstein is a Spurs fan, it is hard to find any serious weaknesses to Bowley's bid other than the fact a section of English football supporters remain generally skeptical skeptical, skeptical over the prospect of American owners. Wiss was the first man to go public over Roman Abramovich's decision to uh, sell Chelsea. Yeah, if you guys remember... Wiss was the first one. Before we go to Sir Martin Broughton, um, I want to, I want to, I want to see, I want to see a um, couple of your comments. So yeah, this is the this is the tweet, um, and this two hours ago. Let's have a look at what Nizar Kinsella has been up to. Top Bowley's consortium were told last night about their success in becoming preferred bidder for Chelsea, per Lawton Times and Pete Hall. And then he goes on to say, Todd Bowley's and Sir Martin Broughton's bid through to the preferred bidder stage to buy Chelsea FC. Now just waiting on word on Nick Candy and Ricketts family. We'll come, we'll come to that for sure. Top Bowley has held talks with senior members at Chelsea about his vision. He's in the driving seat. This is from Nathan G. Singh, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Let's have a look at some of your comments in regards to Top Bowley. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got nearly 70 likes. Let's get further 30 likes to get to 100. And then from there, we'll try and aim for 150. So let's get those 30 likes to 100. If you're here for the first time as well, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you subscribe. Okay. Um, Ridwan Abdi, they're going to suck us. This Todd is going to care about his home team. I don't think so, Ridwan. Like, I mean, look, I, I, we don't know. We don't know. But I don't think we should just assume that he's just going to treat us poorly because he wanted us in 2019. And the way he's been managing or since he's been involved with the LA Dodgers, they've been doing really well. They've got a very good ideology in terms of how to win in a more smart manner, sustainable manner. Smart purchases, having the, the, the smart personnels. This is the issue. Do you know what, ladies and gentlemen? People think all the success that we've had at Chelsea, yes, we've dropped money. 
But at the same time, we've been able to purchase really, really good individuals mixed in with some bad ones as well. I mean, some of our buys, some of our smart buys, Jermaine, like, it's not one of the most expensive ones. Aspilicueta, for example. And there's many more that we've purchased in a very, very smart manner. I think what Top Bowley is going to do is he's hopefully going to hire the right people in order to run the football club. So, you know, your director of football, scouts, our scouts, our scouts have been so bad. Like, yes, we've been winning recently, but I kid you not, Thomas Tuchel didn't win because Roman pumped money into the team. Even though we did in order to get, you know, Timo Werner, Kai Havertz, Ziyech, we were not the favorites to win the Champions League. We won because of Thomas Tuchel. So I think, I think what Todd Bowley is going to come in and do is that it's not going to be about let's, let's buy the early Holland of the world. Do you know what I mean? And, and if it is let's buy the early Holland, then let's get rid of a few, few of the players that we don't want them to stick around. I think he's going to manage the club far better. We have been unsustainable. We, we are not a sustainable club with one. Under Roman, Roman racked, racked up 1.5 billion pounds in debt with one. You, don't, you cannot run a football club like that, my man. The way Roman has been running, that, that's not ideal. But see, what Roman wanted was just win. It didn't matter. But for him, do your research. The, yes, he loved Chelsea Football Club, but there were other reasons to buy Chelsea Football Club. He probably wanted to rack up the debt because in a way, maybe it was able to shield all the other assets that he has, all the other money that he has. All of this situation is a bit too above our pay grade, honestly, to understand. We can't expect every owner to come in and be like Roman. Maybe the Middle Eastern ones. Maybe, maybe Saudi owners would have done that. But what I like about the Bowley is the Bowley and, and his consortium is that hopefully we, we as Chelsea Football Club down the track will become self-sustainable. At the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, I want Chelsea Football Club to never be in this situation again. I want Chelsea Football Club to be able to earn its own income and to able to pay off its own expenses. Yes, have an owner that can inject a bit of cash, but at the same time, pay the cash back when we, when we have the ability to pay back. I don't want another owner that just injects, 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 and, and then racks up a big debt. I want to be able to be sustainable. I want the football club to be able to run on its own. I think that should be all of our dreams. Himanshu. Means I'd rather win more trophies than be run. I did. My man. <laughs> Himanshu, man, I expected better from you, bro. I thought, I thought you were the sensible one. Look, we all expect more, more trophies. As fans, we expect trophies, but we, we can't expect trophies in a way where the football club is run in an unsustainable manner. Are you saying, Himanshu, Chelsea can earn $10, but go out there and spend $100? How can you think that's realistic, man? How can you actually think that's realistic? It's a, put yourself in a real life situation. If you're earning X amount of money, let's just say argument say you earn hundred bucks. How can you go out and spend five hundred dollars? How? It doesn't make sense, man. That's not how the world works. 
Whoever is wanting to put the money has the divine right to expect a return. Let me ask you something, Himanshu. If you were to let me borrow some money from you, so if I said, Himanshu, I want to I wanna, I wanna get 10 bucks off you. Do you just give me the 10 bucks and just walk away? Or you'd be like, okay, Miz, I'm going to give you 10 bucks, but I at least want the 10 bucks back, if not with some interest as well. No one in this world gives anything for free, man. Even though as much as we may think, oh, Roman, you know, he just pumped money. There were some benefits for him, which is beyond us. As I said, go check out some of the videos. There's a reason why Roman really wanted a football club. There's a reason why he's now apparently in talks in, in, in order to get a Turkish club. Does he love that Turkish club? That Turkish club is coming 18th. He doesn't love that Turkish club. It's a mechanism to shield your assets. It's a mechanism to shield your money. We just got lucky that we won a lot of stuff. Roman obviously fell in love with Chelsea and then all the money that he, he did pump into the club, you know, it resulted in silverware. But that's just one way of doing things. There are other ways of winning trophies. You don't necessarily just have to look look at look at what we did with Lukaku, ladies and gentlemen. Look at what we did with Lukaku. 100 million pounds. How do you feel about that, ladies and gentlemen? You tell me. Would you spend that money elsewhere? How do you feel about spending 100 million pounds on Lukaku, who is now benched? And he's probably going to be kicked out of Chelsea Football Club for half the price. This is perfect from Shubra. Bringing new scouts and a DOF. Deals. We don't need money to win trophies. It, I mean, look, I'm not saying categorically we don't need money. We do need money, but we don't need, we don't need 100 million pounds to spend on Lukaku to win trophies because... We could have done without Lukaku this season. We need to spend good money. We need to spend good money. For example, Declan Rice is now worth 150 million. Do you advocate for Chelsea Football Club to go out there and buy Declan Rice for 150 million? Read one again saying, we are trying to compete. My man, you can compete still without the hundred million pound investments, smart investments. Look at look at Luis Diaz for Liverpool. 35 or 37 million pounds from Porto. Who's a better purchase? Lukaku or Luis Diaz? Who's a better purchase? Saul or Luis Diaz? I'm talking about just in terms of value, you know, money's worth. D don't worry about the positions where they play and whatnot. Just money's worth. Who was a better value? Saul, you know how much we're paying for Saul, his salary? We're paying somewhere around 200, 230,000 or something like that per week. Saul, do you think that's smart? Do you think that makes us... A, a wonderful club. I don't want a football club to be run like that. Just waste money. Be smart. We could have done without Sal. We could have done without Lukaku. And we still would have won the Super Cup and Club World Cup. They didn't add, you know, although Lukaku did score goals in, in Super Cup, both the games. But it, it's not as if, if, if he didn't play that we wouldn't have won that. Himanshu, yeah, I think I'm just panicking a little bit, Miz. I think it's just the PTSD of American owners I'm getting from Arsenal and Man United. Look, I've had the privilege to speak to 
few American viewers of this channel in recent times. And I kid you not, the, the sensible ones will tell you, even they get worried when they see American owners and what they've done with the Arsenal Football Club and Man United. But they've also said not everyone's like that. Not everyone's like that. And there's a lot of good feedback on Todd Bowley. We can't paint the, you know, a picture with the same brush. Just because whatever has happened to Cronkays and, and Arsenal and the Glazers. See, the thing with Himanshu, here's the thing. A lot of these Man United fans complain about the Glazers. Do you know how much money that they've spent at Man United? Man United have spent a lot of money, lots, lots more than us, and they've spent a lot of money in wages. You can't even say that they don't spend. They spend, but they spend stupid. So it's not even about spending money. Look at Man United. They've spent so much more than us. So much more. Wages and transfer fee. But they've gone backwards. The issue with their ownership, however, is they made wrong decisions. So you've got the Cronkies with Arsenal who haven't spent. Only now they're starting to spend. And they've made wrong decisions. So that's a double whammy there. But with the Man United ones, they've actually spent. It's just they made some poor decisions. They didn't make, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, for example, he wasn't the right man. Some of their transfers, Harry Maguire, 80 million, you know. Fred. Cristiano Ronaldo, as much as I love him, I don't think he was the right player for them. Do you know what I mean? So, look, I understand that you're panicking, but don't, don't, my man. I mean, as I said, a lot of the Americans, they believe Top Bowley is, um, is someone who we can trust. Alex Abhishek Matthews, thank you so much for the super chat, my man. If we win Premier League in the next two to three years, I still, I'll still be Roman ill. It'll still be Roman's blessings. Real test for new owners starts from 2025. Either will be Liverpool or Arsenal with a big statement. Look, even under Roman, Alex, it's not like we've been competing in the Premier League for the last five years. We've been so far away from Liverpool and Man City, it's not even funny. Yes, we've picked up a Europa. Yes, we've picked up Champions League, Super Cup, Club World Cup, sure. But a lot of this is because of the managers. I don't necessarily think a lot of these are because of the high caliber players that we got. It's because we had smart, extremely smart managers. Sari was a good manager and he absolutely blew Arsenal apart in that final in Champ uh, Europa. Thomas Tuchel last season, there is no way you can tell me we were the favourites to win the Champions League. Our team under Frank Lampard was dysfunctional. Even though we spent so much money. It's not about the money, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, in a sense, you need money to obviously bring in players, but you don't need stupid money. You need the right individuals to run your football club. Once you get the right people in, I'm telling you, you are going to see success after success after success. Miz, to be honest, even with City, they have a lot of money, yet they prioritize good scouting. Exactly. Look at, look at City with the way they've got Julian Alvarez from River Plate. They've got Savinho or Savio from um, a Brazilian club, um, Santos maybe, can't remember. They, they make smart, like they've, look at, look at City's recruitments in recent times. A lot of people will say, well, what about Jack Grealish? He's a bit of a problem, but Jack Grealish will come good, man. And that 100 million is going to look like a bargain. 
they barely make mistakes, man. They barely and, and and as soon as they do make mistakes, they they rectify. They rectify. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at Sir Martin Broughton and Josh Harris. Let's check them out. Before we do that, Alex, thank you so much for the super chat again. Let's bring that up. Thank you, heaps, my man. Hate to foresee Stanford Bridge being renamed to McDonald's Arena. <laughs> I hope not, man. I hope not. Um, yeah, I hope it's always Stanford Bridge. I don't think they're looking to rename that. I mean, look, it's such a historic name, man, Stanford Bridge. I just hope, like what they did with uh, Camp New, Spotify Camp New. Yeah, uh, stay away from all of that, please. Please stay away from all of that. Just leave it, leave it at Stanford Bridge. That's all I ask. Uh, Marvo, Ms. Appointing a DOF is key, man. 100%. 100% agreed. That's the key factor. Um, I'll do another super chat before we talk about Sir Martin Broughton. My man, Digital Film Reviews. Thank you so much for the super chat. For me, the most important thing is the stadium. I'd prefer an owner who is willing to pay more for the stadium to set us up for the long-term success. Exactly. We, as I keep saying, we cannot be in the same situation ever again where... We don't earn enough to keep ourselves floating. We need to be in a situation where we earn enough to maintain our costs. And whatever is the savings, it's, it's, like, it's like running a household, ladies and gentlemen. It's like running your life. Whatever you earn minus your expenses, whatever savings you have, you put it away for the transfer kitty. And then you may get the owner to add a bit of money, injection of money, but then they'll obviously want some return. So... It's a give and take. It's a give and take. Okay. Sir Martin Broughton, ladies and gentlemen. Sir Martin Broughton, the former Liverpool chairman. Wow. The former Liverpool chairman. I had no idea about that. And Chelsea supporter has made himself the public face of the bid. But he is not believed to be financing it. So he's not the one who's financing it, Sir Martin Broughton. David Blitzer. Another Palace shareholder, sorry, here we go. First, let's start with Josh Harris. Josh Harris, reportedly worth around $4.5 billion. Crystal Palace shareholder, Harris is thought to be the main financial driver behind the bid. Well, $4.5 billion ain't going to cut it. Um, next up, David Blitzer, another Palace shareholder. Blitzer is said to be worth about $1 billion and co-owns the Philadelphia 76 with Harris. So once again, it's not like they've got a lot of cash. Vivek Ranadhyav, uh, the Indian businessman, has been named as being one of the group's minority investors worth about $500 million. He owns the Sacramento Kings basketball team. Wow, $500 million. That's not much. So he's a minor investor. Lord Sebastian Coe, Chelsea supporter and double Olympic gold medal winner. Coe has publicly backed the bid, but his involvement is understood to be relatively minor. Where is their money coming from then? Sir Martin Broughton and Josh Harris, they don't seem to have enough money. Josh Harris has got $4.5 billion and he's the financier. What are you going to do with $4.5 billion? That ain't going to cut it. He's apparently the main financial driver behind the bid. Well, you got Todd Bowley and his uh, Clear Lake, who've got 60 billion. You're fighting against 60 billion, my man. Clear Lake Capital, 60 billion in assets. Oh my God, this, this isn't even, even a two horse race. This is just a one horse race. They got no chance. Josh Harris with 4.5 billion, you know. Come on. David Blitzer, 1 billion. Anyway, apparently the co-owners of um, of Crystal Palace, Sports Experience, Harris and Blitzer are both shareholders in Crystal Palace, but have not opened their wallets significantly for Chelsea's Premier League rivals. They also co-own the 76ers basketball team, who they bought in 2011. The value of the 76ers has shot up since the arrival of Harris and Blitzer, although the team itself has not enjoyed much notable success. So 76ers have not really seen any success. Report, report claimed 
the pair want to take over an NFL team and place it in London. Oh. Reports have claimed the pair want to take over an NFL team and place it in London. So these guys probably want Chelsea for all the wrong reasons. Broughton was the chairman at Liverpool for six months and helped the sale of the club. These guys are not serious, ladies and gentlemen. That's the vibe that I'm getting. That's, yeah. I'm not really sure about this, Sir Broughton. They don't give me a good vibe at all. Fan involvement. Broughton and co. are both Chelsea fans. It is likely Broughton would take on the role of chairman if their bid is successful, with Co in the in line to be given a place on the board. Co is already close with the existing Chelsea board, including Chairman Bruce Buck, who he sat with at Wembley for the Carabao Cup final defeat to Liverpool. Broughton was there in that Carabao Cup match against Liverpool, and he probably enjoyed the fact that Liverpool won. He was once upon a time a Liverpool chairman. There had even been talk that Co would be part of the doom plan to put the running of the club into the hands of a board of trustees. Wow. Broughton claims that the group are on board with Tracy Crouch's fan-led review, albeit without detailing which elements he would be prepared to employ. And that has that he has met with the Chelsea support. They didn't allow Chelsea supporters trust, apparently, to be part of the board. These guys are not serious. Stamford Bridge, precious little known on what the Broughton Harris bid have planned for Stamford Bridge. And they don't even have like, they don't actually even have a plan for Stamford Bridge. Redevelopment plan and whatnot. The Wells Fargo Center, where the 76ers play, has undergone 227 million renovation work, but it's nothing like the redevelopment Stamford Bridge needs. Co received criticism for his part in pushing through the building of the Olympic Stadium without any initial plan for it to double as a football stadium. He later supported West Ham United's move into the stadium because of the club's commitment to keep a running track. They don't even have an expertise, like at least with Candy. Nick Candy has expertise in commercial property. This is why he wanted, you know, Stamford Bridge. He wanted to do the redevelopment. Obviously, Nick Candy has been... They're gone. I think they're out. I know we're still awaiting the final sort of message on that, but I think they're gone. They're out. With Todd Bowley, at least you have Jack uh, Jonathan Goldstein, the Spurs supporter. At least he's got commercial, you know, property experience, so he knows what to do with the redevelopment plan for Chelsea. These guys, where's your where's your brother? Where's your brother for for the redevelopment? You don't have a person, you're, so you're not going to redevelop. How is this a two-horse race? How have these guys made the bid? See, this is the thing. How did these guys make the bid? And how did Saudis no, never made it? That's mad, man. You don't even have the money. Come on. You don't have any plans for the stadium. You don't have plans for nothing. You're just vibes. You're a Liverpool fan. The Liverpool chairman. What have they said? Less than 24 hours after bidding for Chelsea closed last Friday night, Broughton did a tour of Sky, TalkSport and BBC to talk about his campaign to take over the club, but he has still not confirmed the involvement of Harris and Blitzer or confirmed the identities of any of the other investors. Okay, so maybe they have other investors, but even Harris and Blitzer, they're not doing a great job for 76ers. That would potentially come now. The group has been shortlisted. It has been a, almost a week since said since he said there will be no hiding of any of the players. It will be completely transparent. I can't do it now, but it will be totally transparent. I can't do it now, but it'll be. Hey, you you don't have anything. Don't worry. You have absolutely nothing. Any weaknesses, as revealed by T Telegraph Sport, the Premier League could face complaints if Harris and Blitzer are confirmed as investors in Broughton's bid. The pair would have to divest their 18% stakes in Crystal Palace to pass the owners and directors. To now, this is too long, ladies and gentlemen. How are these guys going to be actually owners of Chelsea Football Club when they own 18% of Crystal Palace? You will have to sell that. Nah, I've read enough. I've read enough. I've read enough. Honestly, this is not even a chance.
This is not even a chance. How did Sir Martin Bro Sir Martin Broughton's bid is backed by Harris and Blitzer, who are worth combined 5.5 billion, while Bowley is worth 5 billion alone, and backed by Clear Clear Lake Capital with over 60 billion of assets under management. The difference between the two is staggering. Exactly. Exactly. No. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a two-horse race. The two-horse race has just become a one-horse race. <laughs> you might as well just announce Todd Bowley as the winner. Sir Martin Broughton, Harris and Blitzer, they're 18% owners of Crystal Palace. So you're going to have to let go of that first. You think you can just let go of that ownership like that? That's going to be a long process. That process ain't going to be short. How have the Saudis not made in this bid? Hell, but probably Nick Candy should have made it ahead of Sir Martin Broughton. I need to probably tweet this out. Just hang on a second, ladies and gentlemen. I need to, I need to, I am not, I, I, I'm a bit baffled by this whole situation. You guys help me out here. How in the blue hell how has Sir Martin Broughton and Josh Broughton Josh Harris and Blitzer Blitzer? Is that his name? Blitzer? Is that your name? Yeah, Blitzer. Blitzer. Uh, how has Sir Martin Burton, Josh Harris, and Blitzer... Uh, how has Sir Martin Broughton, Josh Harris, and Blitzer even made through to this shortlist? Um, uh, yeah. Not enough money. Need to sell Palace shares. No stadium redevelopment plans. Poor sporting ownership history. How is this a two horse race? Just a should have been rejected. Yeah, that's mad. That's mad. Um, see, this is the thing, ladies and gentlemen. This whole process, this whole process of shortlist, I feel it's so corrupted, man. I, I, I honestly, I can't take this seriously. How have they made in? After reading what we just read, how? How did Sir Martin Broughton... No stadium redevelopment plan. They don't have the money. And they're palace owners. 
How haven't the South Koreans made it? How hasn't the Saudis? Saudis apparently, it's all debt financing. Saudis are apparently getting all their money through debt financing. Come on, are you serious? Saudis apparently they were, they were their revenue was they were turnover their turnover was something around a billion a month or something like that a month You're telling me this isn't rigged How did the rain group so yeah okay yeah so Martin Burton yeah you you you've got the money you've got the plan how how we just read in the last 10 minutes and we figured out that you're not you're not fit to be a candidate how's how's the how's the rain group actually thinking that this is these guys are actually a chance how it's mad man eh. <laughs> How, and, and now, you know, they're still in the limbo with the rickets situation. How are rickets are even considered? It's all rigged. I swear. This is what I've been saying. It's all rigged. It was already predetermined. I've got no issues with Todd Bowley winning. I've got, I think Todd Bowley is a, you know, he's going to be a decent, you know, it's going to be a decent uh, owner. Himansha means what keyboard do you use? Cherry MX Blue? Nah, bro. It's just a work, work keyboard. Just a standard keyboard, man. Um, is anything conferred by Rain? Uh, Alba Kuber, look, they've not specifically come out, but the journalists, the key big journalists, they apparently they've already heard that Rain has called. Todd Bowley and Sir Martin Broughton. How? Todd Bowley, I completely understand. Todd Bowley actually has legitimacy. Has the money. Has the fundings. Has stadium redevelopment plans. Has plans as to how to make Chelsea sustainable. Um, Sir Martin Broughton, no plan. No money. No redevelopment, anything. At this moment, Nick Candy and the South Koreans should have been given an opportunity. The, the, the Saudis should have been given an opportunity. Ricketts should not even have been considered. Ricketts should have been gone. Um, sorry. Jeremy, good to see you. My man, Miz, check out his interview on TalkSport. I don't think he should take over. Are you talking about Sir Martin Burton? Sir Martin Burton used to be a chairman of Liverpool, and he only was chairman of Liverpool to facilitate the sale. I don't think they're here at Chelsea to, to actually run the football club. They probably just want to take Chelsea to be able to sell again. It's all a farce, man. The entire thing is a bit of a farce. Rain Group. Rain Group is just too busy trying to figure out how to put how to put the Ricketts family into the mix. I'm pretty certain the Rain Group is probably just thinking, how can we just sneak the Ricketts in? Andrew saying, is five billion not enough for entitled Chelsea? It's not about the five billion, my man. Five billion to buy, then what, what are you going to do in, in order to redevelop the stadium, in order to run its day-to-day -day expenses for the time being before it actually becomes sustainable? <laughs> Have you seen our wage bill, Andrew? Do you know how much we spend on wages? Five billion is nearly not enough. How much do you think stadium redevelopment would be? Stadium redevelopment is going to be at least 1.1 1 .1 to 1.5 billion. 
Chelsea Football Club, in order to buy that, will be at least three billion. At least. So you got three billion to buy Chelsea Football Club, and then further one bit one to one point five billion to renovate the stadium. And then you actually need to start injecting money in order to make sure you can keep Chelsea afloat the expenses until Chelsea becomes sustainable, where you can start taking money to pay off your, you know, the the, the money that you've you know let Chelsea Football Club have. Nah, man. That's not how it works, man. Yeah, this isn't. We're not talking about one billion, two billion, three. Like every, there's plenty of big businessmen out there. They they all have billions. We're talking about wealth. We're talking about proper wealth. That's why the South Koreans they had eight hundred billion, eight hundred billion in in um. Manage funds. That's the type of money we're talking about. Matt Chills. Bowley seems more committed and long-term, plus more secure to me. Only option by sounds of 100%. 100% only option. Princeton. Good to see you. Miz, I hope SMG team up with Top Bowley Consortium. Yeah, I don't think Top Bowley is going to do that. I know... The Saudi media group, they wanted to, well, they're open to join with other other groups out there. But I don't think anyone's going to... Top Bolly's already said he's got Clear Lake. Clear Lake's got $60 billion in in managed funds. So, um, Ajay Damola, Stephen, good to see you. Miz, emotions shouldn't be at play here. We don't know the details of these deals. If a bid got to this level, then Rain thinks they have the finance. Matt has more information from the Todd's camp. Look, perhaps, but maybe we are giving too much credit to this Rain group. Maybe there is no process. Maybe it was all predetermined already. The rain group seems to know so much. Why haven't they categorically come out and said, why haven't the Saudis got into this situation? They've said that the Saudis have, it's a lot of debt financing, or not really them said it, but there's been other journalists been saying it, they're heavily debt financed. Whereas the Saudis themselves have said, we're a bit unsure as to why we didn't make the final cut. The Saudis are unsure. So, yeah, why haven't the South Koreans made it? And looking at Sir Martin Broughton, their team sucks. Sir Martin Broughton was an ex-Liverpool chairman that facilitated the Liverpool sale. So are you here to facilitate another Chelsea sale down the track? Is that what your thing is? Joshua Harris and David Blitzer, they're current Crystal Palace owners, 18% hold. How are you going to get rid of that first? Because there's a conflict of interest. You can't be owners of two, two football clubs in the same league. And where's your stadium redevelopment plan? Nah. It's not on. It's not on. There's the thing about the fan-led ownership brought by Sir Martin is that I don't like important... And this is the other thing as well. Jeremy, you're bang on. Sir Martin Broughton is saying that Seb Coe is going to be part of the board who's also going to be interested to bring the Chelsea Trust Foundation into the board and have fans involved. I don't need fans. Fans, are, fans don't have any idea how to, how to run a football club. I don't want that. Yeah. His bid is about keeping fans at the forefront. Probably why Rain selected. That's see. Someone told me Rain is only ca caring about financials and they're not very interested about all these fans and whatnot. They just want to make sure that you've got the money. I don't know who to believe anymore. 
I'm not really sure whether the rain group is as smart as we think they are. Yeah, there you go. Hey, let's see. Rain group useless, bro. Stop falling for the PI. I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced with this rain group. Kavita, good to see you. Bro, we have many deadwoods to sell. Even Georgie is going to go. Team of Werner also. We have to rebuild team with Thomas Tuchel players whom he wants in Chelsea's squad. Man, first, let's get the ownership sorted, man. <laughs> let's get the ownership sorted. Werner, good to see you. Apparently, the Koreans or someone from the Candy Group has links to AC Milan as well. Yeah, I think it was like a 10% ownership. So I'm not too worried about that. But I think Ken, the Candy Candyman is not. He's gonna. He's finished. The Candyman. Jensen, fans should stay away from any decisions. One hundred percent. Look, ladies and gentlemen, the final word. This is my final message. I. I find this whole shortlist process by the Rain Group very corrupted i don't find this one bit legitimate because there is no transparency as to why one person is out why one person isn't out i wish there was full transparency as to okay this bid came through first tell us how many bids came through who were they then tell us how you eliminated some of these bidders you've not done that The fact that Sir Martin Broughton is in makes me mad. And I think the Rain Group are really trying their best to bring the Ricketts back into the play. They're really trying their best because they're connected with the Ricketts. So there's a conflict of interest right there. Why aren't the Koreans there? Why aren't the Saudis there? Who are the other bidders? How come we don't know about it? So for me, this process is... It's rigged. It was already predetermined. But it is what it is. As long as it's Todd Bowley, ladies and gentlemen, I think he's the clear-cut winner off the back of what I just understood right now. For me, he's the clear-cut winner, and I hope, I hope we sort this out soon. Because if he's in a two-horse race with Sir Martin Broughton, as reported, then I'm sorry, it's not a two-horse race. It's a clear-cut Todd Bowley winner. This is why I wanted the Saudis to be in, the Koreans to be in. Then Todd Bowley would be in a proper race and may the best man win. Now, Todd Bowley is like so far ahead, it's not even funny. It's not even funny. One horse and one snail race. <laughs> That's disrespecting snails, bro. I would even say Sir Martin Broughton, they don't even fall into the snail category. They're, they're just sleeping. That It's not even a competition. The Ricketts probably would have given the top bowler a really good go. Ricketts got money. But it's not the Ricketts. It's Ken Griffin. Ken Griffin's got FU money. FU. And this is why I think they're going to try do some funny business. But it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Marvo, Miz, are you entertained by Bolly? Look, Bolly seems to be okay for me. Bolly seems to be okay. Miz, I blame Bruce Buck. He's an American. I, I bet he has something to do with it as well. But perhaps, perhaps, perhaps he does. Ladies and gentlemen, look, that is the latest. Are there any news that's coming up now? Let's have a look. Are there anything that's latest at the moment? I'm just bringing it up. Let's check out some latest news, ladies and gentlemen. Begs the question, why did Chelsea pick them? CFC Daily has been on a madness. The no to Ricketts, he's driving that big time. I love it. I love it. Tarek Pena. Of all the Chelsea bidders, the Ricketts family have the closest relationship to Rain. That presents an interesting rare advantage given how Rain has more power than than is typical over this process because the actual owner is in such a bind. Fun to see how all of this is. See, this is the thing. This is why I'm worried. The rain, 
the way they've moved with the Sir Martin Broughton, they're not smart. And they're not really they're not really looking to look at this process in a in an unbiased manner or in a in a in a genuine manner. I think this rain group, they're finding ways to bring the, the rickets in. I'm so sure of it. What else is going on? Spilaqueta. Georginia. I feel sorry for Georginia, man. Italy out of the World Cup, man. That's crazy. Against North Macedonia as well. No to rickets. Man, it's trending big time. Look at these guys, man. Pogba to Chelsea. Maybe we'll do that stream some other time. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. There you go. That's the latest, ladies and gentlemen, on what has happened in terms of Chelsea takeover bid shortlist. Uh, for me, Todd Bowley is the clear winner. But everything else is a bit of a farce. Everything else is a bit of a farce. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you smash the like button before you go. We've got over 200 people. Smash the like button. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, see ya. I should probably have another video down um, later in UK time in the evening. So do look out for that, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, take care. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. See ya.